Allow me to introduce myself. I am Louis Gadetti, a classically trained realist painter forged in the fires of artistic mayhem. Now, I cannot stress enough the importance of having a good model scene and lighting set up, but you must also know how to position your subject at the right height and distance to avoid a certain geometric perspective warp. So sit back and relax and let this flawless video absorb into your cerebral cortex chunk. I will risk my current prestigious portrait endeavors and strip down one side of my model stand to educate you on its most glorious and high-tech construction. I will also show you the lights that I use and how I set them up. But I will not stop there. Being content with no less than perfection, I'm a genius, I will demonstrate to you the benefit of having this type of model stand and how it should be used. So join me as we embrace each other and embark on a magical little journey that I know I'll remember and I'm pretty sure that you will too. Now I built this model stand about 10 years ago out of pine wood, which is sufficient, but I'd recommend using three quarter inch birch wood panels because birch is hard more durable wood than pine is. Now I'll start by cutting two by fours to hold them wood panels together. I use screws instead of nails because America, these colors don't run. Screws do a better job of holding them wood panels together, which comes in handy when you have a live human that weighs a solid deuce, deuce and a half, and is perched on top of it. Now this here is a stand I use for the full figure. A portrait model stand is a little bit different, a little bit higher. I'll go measure that for you right now. Full figure, I got two of these. I built them myself. We got corner braces here. We got a corner brace, corner brace, corner brace. Another one right there. And we got them one, two, three, four. Ah, sh Though the comedic value would be great and would perhaps outweigh the physical harm done to said fatty. I'll put wheels on it. I would still recommend imitating me on this channel and take the high road of superb professionalism and maturity and make sure the model stand is built so no human could fall through it. Now I would say total 42. So you're looking at 42 by 49 by 12. We've got a piece of wood here. I don't know where it goes to. Shit, this thing's more complex than I thought. We got a bunch of safety pins. What we got here, a white cloth with an intricate design. Don't know what they use this for. Make a nice tux out of this one. Yeah, it's pattern. We got pattern cloth, white cloth. Can't wear it after Labor Day, but I take it. I take it. And we got a pole here. We got PVC piping, more PVC piping. We got, it's symmetrical on each side. Uh, I'm just going to peel this back for all prying eyes to see. As you can tell, right there is where we got it mounted. All right. We got a creepy little child right here. Uh, this is the center pole. It appears to be mounted right there. You got it mounted right there. Got it mounted right there. This straight piece of duct tape. This will fix anything here in North Carolina. It connecting up the top. We got it running. Oh, we got this corner brace right here. It turns at a 90 degree angle. It goes all the way back there. Let's see if you can see it. This creepy child right there. Got to turn him, face him away. You're going to have nightmares over that one. We got the PVC pipe right there. Got a corner brace going up in the center. As you can see, it's very sturdy. Got one in the back. Don't know if you can see it. It's running right down this way. Connecting at the bottom. Yeah. That's how it looks now. Wrecking a better shot from this angle. One of the main purposes of having a model stand is to elevate the human so its eyes are on an equal level to yours. This prevents distortion in your work, which comes from looking up or down on your model. Don't get me wrong. As highly advanced painters, we must accustom ourselves to look down on all the morons out there, for are we not the intellectual leaders of society? As my dear friend and colleague Plato once stated, the measure of a man is what he does with power. Therefore, it is up to us to use our superior powers in the mind to subdue them. I got them cinder blocks here for steps. Yeah, moving myself. Let's measure this. We got 40 inches wide. Let's see if I can scooch it back. Ugh. We're going with 49 inches long. So we got 40 by 49. And we got roughly 21 inches tall from the ground. I put wheels on it. 21 inches. I'll translate that into feet for you. 
It's there's a one. Multiply times eight. I'd say about three feet high or four, maybe maybe six feet. Maybe that's six feet. And we got a chair in it. The cinder blocks. You got wheels. In addition to elevating the human, the model stand should act as a controlled environment for light. Now I did this by attaching PVC pipe on each side so as to enable me to drape cloth over it easily without making the stand overly heavy like your face. In this manner, I can choose what type of cloth I want to hang for the specific masterpiece I might be effortlessly doing. For example, I'll oftentimes drape white cloth on the side to reflect some light up onto the human if I wish for more form to be seen on its face. Other times, I will have a darker cloth so the shadows make the face sink into the darkness. We'll say up, yeah. At the very top of this model stand, how we form this opening for light? Cardboard, cheap and easy. Simpleton, you might be thinking, to which I would respond, that the cardboard can easily be adjusted to control the amount of light in the scene while its lightweight prevents it from falling into decapitating faces, while simultaneously adding to the model's overall lightweight nature. Who's the simpleton now? On top of the cardboard, my genius level intellect prompted me to place some tracing paper over the aperture to diffuse the light that ever so gracefully passes through and onto the human's face. Without it, the light would cut sharply over the subject and you would see crisscrossing shadows across the model's fat face. Python, a quick word on lighting, and this is perhaps one of the most important lessons I will meld into your brain lumps. The best lighting a studio can have is north-facing skylights that are frosted to diffuse the light. Northern light that is natural is essentially reflected light from the sun, which means the direction of light and its color temperature will be constant throughout the day. Southern light, by contrast, is more direct light that shifts color temperature and direction throughout the day. Never set up using windows that are either east or west facing because they will catch the movement of the sun as well, thereby making the planetary rotation your enemy. You will find that the shadows will change over the course of the day. If you do not have access to north facing windows, fear not. There is a most perfect bulb that will most accurately mimic northern light and that is a 5500 Kelvin bulb. The Kelvin is simply the color temperature of the lights. A warmer bulb might be a lower number like 3300 Kelvin, while a fluorescent bulb will have a much higher number around 6500 Kelvin. 5500 Kelvin is a very balanced bulb and will be most faithful to your model setup and viewing your colors. The lumen on the bulb is simply the intensity of light output. If the bulb is for some reason too bright for your lighting, I recommend putting a Bofant cap over it to incrementally dim the light without shifting its color temperature. Now I mount these lights using Lowe's work lamps and hang them above the model stand in an offset position a few feet above the opening. Now, it's optimal to have a high ceiling to allow the light to spread and to be less harsh. But if you don't have said high ceiling, you can either double up on tracing paper which slows the amount of light coming through, or you can reflect that light right up off the ceiling to be less harsh. Every environment must be uniquely adjusted, but my intent is to give you an idea of what you should be striving to create, and that is a solid and attractive flow of light that falls ever so softly over the subject's face. I put wheels on it. So now that we have the setup, how should we use this most glorious and wondrous technological contraption? My dear, dear peasants, I will show you myself, and I will infuse you with something more efficacious than the knowledge of the old masters, and that is my own genius. In drawing a portrait, I recommend two different methods. The first method is the sight size method, and the second is simply drawing using comparative measurements. To achieve a life size portrait, you can place your work in line with the human's temple and step back a solid six feet to view it. Doing so will take away any distortions in perspective that would otherwise be caused by viewing the model from too close a distance. From there, you will observe the model from a short distance and walk up to your work and draw the actual size of the model. This method will increase your visual memory by having to retain the information in your mind as you walk forward and will assist the work in looking correct from afar in addition to close up. If you wish to do a smaller work using the sight size method, you may bring the board a few feet in front of the model and stand at a closer distance where you can then superimpose the face onto the work at the desired smaller size and work from there in a stationary manner. If you do not wish to use the sight size method, you can instead opt to use comparative measurements only. I recommend standing a few feet distance from the human to avoid perspective distortion, especially if you are recording their torso as well. If it's the face only, you can afford to be slightly closer.
As usual, this is just a fraction of the golden roasted knowledge I wish to infuse into your brain sack. For my genius is rich, and I've been endowed with glorious wisdom. So be content with these briefly morsels of greatness I've imparted to you this day. This knowledge is indeed golden, and should forevermore enhance your own inferior artwork. And it is my wish that all of you have found some level of fulfillment in your own lives after watching this most inspiring video. I know that I have. Well, it's official. We have lost control of these videos. <gasps> oh, son of a... I'll put wheels on it.